are no such thing as best practices because every context is very different. There's very different cultures of water, very different sociocultural meanings to water, and it's very important that we understand these before we start applying similar performance-driven and technology notions to specific places around the world. And we can't just repeat um, very good examples from one culture to another. I was talking about the importance of the relationship of water and cities in three very different contexts. One in Belgium, in a context where there was a huge conflict between uh, a port that was needing to expand and how it was going to displace ancient settlements and how this would need to be resolved with flooding uh, entire areas as nature compensation. The second case was in Asia, in Vietnam, in the Mekong Delta, a place of 18 million people, and how you could use water, which is really the DNA of that context, to restructure uh, the entire area as a place that could use the water structure to strengthen the area's identity and to create new landscape and urban morphologies and how to have water remain the structure of this place. And finally, the third example was in Los Angeles. So a place that has very little water, a place that's mostly uh, with drought, but how water could become visible and how it could become a part of the city that is exposing itself to a water element and uses uh, the little water it has in a, in a recycling system to irrigate a public space that would again become important for the city. So it was also attempting to show that from academics to city officials, to engineers, to city managers, and what I hope to do is to show that actually design um, has a great importance and it's not just a kind of icing on the cake, but that projects, design projects, can actually help to inspire policy and that it doesn't need to be the other way around.